Good morning. This is David Dillard of uh, Sleep and Sinus Centers, and uh, here to talk a little bit about the um, the contributions of the nose to sleep apnea, and some things that you need to look for and know about, and then uh, a couple of different uh, a couple of different things that are um, considerations when you are dealing with sleep apnea. Um, and how the nose problems contribute to that. Um, the um, the, um, the nose, um, in general, we think of as a uh, humidifier for the lungs. Uh, it's kind of what its main job in life is. But um, there's several different labels that you can be obstructed from the tip of the nose to the turbinates, which are two structures that kind of look like the extra uh, fuel tanks underneath the air, an airplane. Um, if you look at the engine hanging down from the bottom side of the airliners, they kind of um, are oriented in the same sort of fashion as the engines on the bottom of an airliner. And those, um, those structures um, help direct airflow. The tip of the nose opens and closes, they call it actually the nasal valve, because if you look at cats or, or whales for that matter, um, the nose is able to close and open, uh, and ours does to a degree as well. Some of that relaxes as we get older and the cartilage slides inward. Um, and there are some neat tricks that are available to help fix that. One of the big problems for people not tolerating CPAPs or that the nose is being pushed in by the mask that is pushing in and it just collapses the nose and of course the air is blowing against the face. There is a, um, a series of other structures inside the nose that need to be looked at from the sinuses to the septum to the adenoids, potentially masses, um, all of which contribute to the resistance inside the nose. And so during an evaluation for sleep apnea, all of those structures need to be looked at. Especially if you have symptomatic um, problems from your, your nose, it needs to be addressed. But um, certainly as a general part of the evaluation, just looking is probably not sufficient um, to get a good idea of what's going on with the nose with people who have sleep apnea. Uh, in addition to this, the, um, the compression of the nasal valve by the mask is a particular concern. So if when you suck in like that and your nose collapses with uh, relatively uh, minor um, effort to inhale, if it's collapsing, that's a, a good sign that you need to be addressed by an ENT. Um, if you can touch the structures through here and the, um, the nose is kind of soft and floppy, that's a problem as well. You need to sort of feel it, and if it's not just springy, kind of like um, the ear, uh, but a little bit harder, then you need to be looked at. Um, also, if you lift up your nose and you can breathe better, it's a situation known as tiptosis, which is a, um, a PTOSS, PTOSIS. Um, that's a, a, a um, condition that can also contribute to this and needs to be evaluated. So, the nose is important mostly because if you have problems breathing through your nose and your mouth opens up, the tongue falls back into the airway. Um, it, is, uh, it changes that relationship to the back of the throat and that's a problem. So we don't want that. And then subsequently, um, you know, it's, it's something you've got to discuss with your doctor. And sometimes you have to actually prompt your doctor will remember to talk to you about it because you know people get busy and they um, they may misinterpret uh, something that you said about your nose and etc. and um, and so that needs to be addressed. Uh, the masks can cause sinusitis um, if you're not cleaning them properly. Certainly, if you're drying your nose out, they can cause problems. And the CPAP can, can contribute to a really dry situation inside the nose that causes bleeding. Also, this can be an issue that requires you to see someone to see about alternative therapies. So, hopefully this is helpful, uh, and we'll talk to you soon.